on today's episode of the Rice Crypto Show, I am joined by my good friend and fellow content creator, Crypto Blood from CBTV for a crypto collaboration video. We are going to be posting this on both of our YouTube channels. And I definitely encourage you to make sure you are subscribed to CBTV if you're not already. I will have links down below in the video description. Today, we're going to be talking about everything concerning the FTX Sam Bankman Freed news. And then we're going to be turning the conversation to our thoughts on cryptocurrency and the markets. Before we get into it, make sure you visit RiceTVX.com and sign up for my mailing list so you never miss an update or new Rice TVX and Rice Against the Grain content. You will also find links to all of my various channels as well as my social media. Make sure you're following both of my YouTube channels, Rice TVX, as well as Rice Against the Grain. And due to censorship, make sure you follow me on other alternative platforms such as Rumble and Odyssey, where I do post up exclusive content. If you want to support Rice TBX, be sure to check out and join my Patreon channel, where you will get early access to my videos with no ads unedited. You will also get exclusive content and more. Thank you for tuning in for today's collaboration video between Rice TVX and CBTV Crypto Blood. We do this often. We've been on each other's channels multiple times. We're going to have links down below for each other's channels. So depending on where you're watching this, whether you're watching on CBTV, make sure you're subscribed to Rice TVX. And if you're watching on Rice TVX, make sure you're subscribed to CBTV. What is going on, my friend? Hey, man. Another day in crypto paradise. We got it's all always... the frieds, all the frieds uh, running around <laughs> killing crypto. The crazy if frieds. If it's fried bird or if it's uh, Sam Bankman fried, I don't, you know, it's just freed fried. What, who, who knows, bro? I'm good, it's, man. It, How are you? Right. I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Um, we decided to record this today on the 23rd of November, and we are going to jointly release this on both of our YouTube, Rumble, and Odyssey channels on Thursday the 24th, which will be Thanksgiving. So I personally want to wish everybody a Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving out there, including you, CB. Sounds like a murder to me. <laughs> I'm going to have links <laughs> down below for your website, your social media, mine as well. Um, if you guys are interested in signing up with Crypto Blood's Bloodalytics crypto trading tool, uh, you can get 25% off using the promo code RICETV25 at checkout. So that's RICETV25 at checkout. And I'll have that down below in the video description for people watching on Rice TVX. Yeah. So Absolutely what is going right. on? I mean, like this crypto, this whole uh, thing that's been going on with FTX exchange, the, this whole debacle has uh, just yeah. been a little bit insane. Um, initially, yeah. when, when this first took place, I didn't even want to cover it. Why? But because I didn't really want to give any attention to Sam Bankman Fried, and I really thought NFTX and I really thought a lot of other channels were doing a great job. But realizing I feel that way a lot of times too. Well, this man. was initially. This was initially, but because yeah. of how impactful this thing is and still will be, in my opinion, I it it definitely needs to be spoken about as mainly a warning to people in cryptocurrency. And I've been using it as a way to promote self custody using a cryptocurrency wallet that you possess and control your private keys, getting your crypto off exchanges if you're not actively trading, not utilizing custodial services right now, especially in uncertain times when we're not really sure who exactly has had exposure uh, to, to FTX. So there's a lot hey, of entities. Ledger, ledger prices are out of the roof. Uh, They're giving other... away, actually. Uh, I don't have my affiliate link hooked up. Do you have an affiliate link? I have one. BitBoy and, and crew hooked me up with one, and I never, ever did it because I'm like, it really Mine expired. I had one. Mine expired. So okay. I need to re I need to get mine up, but I still encourage people to go to the Ledger <laughs> website. The other thing I want to tell people, and tell me if you agree about this, CB, mm -hmm. When you buy a hardware wallet, 
Yeah. You should always buy directly from the manufacturer and, and not a third party, not Amazon, anything that you think you're saving a little bit of money. And right now, if you buy directly from Ledger, I think with the Ledger Nano X, they're giving away $30 of Bitcoin. And with a Ledger Nano S, which does not have the Bluetooth technology and you have to use the cords specifically, I think you get $20 in Bitcoin. So you're already okay. saving. You're, you're getting that back off of the top of the price. Yes, yeah, so. please buy direct, guys. And, and maybe Rice can go into why, but it is very important. Well, ultimately, um, let's... Horror stories. They have they have shrink wrapping equipment that somebody could take a product, open it up, tinker with it, and be able to put it back inside of its box and shrink wrap it in a way that you wouldn't even think anything had been done to the device. Right. And you might be you might happen to have a ledger that you bought from a third party that's got some sort of malware, spyware that's going to allow for them to be able to hack into your computer and be able to get your security information. And that's one I did put a video out. When people watch this, it'll be two days ago, but it, I put it out last night, um, a beginner's guide to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency wallets, talking about hot wallets, the different types for desktop, laptop, smart devices, and then cold wallets, which includes your hardware wallet, your cold storage, and your paper wallets, and then your good old brain wallet as well. So I encourage people to check out that video. But yeah, yeah. the this FTX thing, man, it's, uh, you know, I, I didn't think it was going to go as deep as it had had gone initially until I started can I, doing can I some be digging in. Perfectly honest with you, I, of course, knew about FTX because I would see it on the Miami Heat Stadium down in Miami, and you know you hear about it. But I knew very little about FTX up until this scandal, um, because we're not in the main, like we're not mainstream consumers or uh, players in crypto and the blockchain space. We're kind of behind the scenes. We, you know, we don't really pay attention to the, the uh, Brady's of the world, the Shacks of the world out here promoting. I don't even watch. I don't have cable, right? I watch all Me my. Either. Uh, I consume all my information and, and even entertainment on either a Tubi or YouTube. I don't even really watch Netflix that much, so I missed all the fanfare about FTX. So, well, me personally, like. I don't use Coinbase Pro. I don't use Gemini. I don't use Kraken. I have accounts set up. I don't use these exchanges. Kraken is a good exchange, but I don't utilize it. And a lot of it is, to me, it seems more on, especially FTX, it felt like it was more on the traditional side of investments. And with that being said, I just don't like supporting centralized exchanges that I feel are supremely tied to the legacy systems. I've, I've been a big fan of KuCoin. Um, you've mentioned uh, Fairdesk, and BitGit has been coming up a lot lately. It's Fairdesk, yeah, that's right. A, a Fairdesk is who I use for Bloodalytics. Um, a fairly new exchange, but I mean, I, I talk closely with the um, a lot of the higher ups in the company. Um, I mean, hey, you you just don't know. I even tell my Bloodalytics people, look, keep what you want as your principal in the exchange and every week if we have a profitable week or every month take out i would do every week take out what whatever is above that principal and just keep trading that principal because i just can't trust any one at this juncture i would give it another really a really man like 60 days 90 days before i feel comfortable saying Okay, the the dust has settled at least with the exchanges directly. By then, uh, it, you will be out of business if you weren't sufficiently sufficiently capitalized from a, a hit like that from X, FTX. If you had any exposure to it, so I think in another sixty days, ninety days, we should be somewhat in the clear. Not saying people should be relaxed or, or get, become more laxed again. No. But you're going to need to have funds. If you're an active trader, you got to have them on the ex exchange. That's why, I say, that's why I say specifically, do not leave your crypto on an exchange unless you are actively trading and you're willing yeah. to lose what you're actively trading. If it's that's something right. that you can afford to lose. But if you're actively trading your rent money, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't suggest that it's a good idea in these uncertain times. Um, no. 
You know, it's just, we just don't, we, again, we don't know what kind of exposure people are going to have. And, and then we have, unfortunately, you know, which we'll get into the, the potential regulation that's going to come from this, even though, even though, you know, it seems like a lot of government officials had their hands dirty as fuck. Yeah. Yep. I'm not sure how our how our legal system is going to work. I'm looking to see how law prevails in a situation. Um, there's a lot of information coming out. I did interview BitBoy last week, Ben Armstrong, great, to kind of get a great interview. And we great talked interview. afterwards. He gave me some insight on some things he couldn't share publicly. And uh, ultimately, it looks like he's going to be putting together. And I, he did share this. He's going to be putting together all that information for different content creators, influencers, uh -huh. and the Department of Justice, he mentioned yesterday on a live stream, uh, I think it was yesterday, it could have been Monday, there was some guy that came out on Twitter that doxed him. I don't know if you saw this. It put out his he home address. Boy? Yeah, put out his home address and stuff like Who that. Who did? I don't know the guy's name. Ben talked about it on one of his live streams. It was either Monday or Tuesday. And he was talking about giving some information about this guy to the FBI because he had already had a meeting set up with the FBI because I'm assuming he's going to be giving whatever evidence that he's collected. Because ultimately what I was asking him is, you know, we see, and I, and I definitely want to discuss this, we see the possibility of money laundering from a partnership with Ukraine and FTX with money being funneled back to the Democratic Party Sam Bankman yep. Fried being uh, the second largest donor to the Democratic Party overall, past Jorge Seros. Got to be careful with the words since we're going to put this on YouTube. Uh, I think you know who I'm talking about, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. S O R O S. And so yeah. he's the he's the largest contributor donor donor to the Democratic Correct. Party, and Sam Bankman Fried's right after that. Then we have. Say. The, then we have the said, SEC, Gary Gensler stuff, which makes it seem like he was helping FTX to get through a bunch of legal loopholes. Um, you know what we should do, bro? We should do a lot of people, and this is going on YouTube, so I'll have to maybe mention this on our next video that's going on Rumble regarding taxes and, and stuff like that, right? But, um, and I'll talk to you offline about a conversation I have with someone we both know. Okay. I think we should do a video get get a get an attorney on have him inform the people about trusts and blind trusts and having those set up because You know this is something I study with the law stuff, right? No, I didn't. I yeah, didn't I mean it's it. private versus public trust um Charitable remainder trust, trust CREs, yeah. charitable remainder trust, CRTs, excuse me. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple different ones. And if you do it correctly, because there are some people that are doing it and paying taxes. And I'm like, why are you paying taxes on a trust? Because technically, if you do a trust the right way in the private, it's tax exempt. Not only that, um, and again, we can talk about that part of it on another video. But really, what and it, what's applicable here, Rice, to me is the whole situation with Ben being doxxed. You know, you've heard the saying, own nothing, control everything. I think we should be more, more than ever, we need to, as crypto people, we need to start playing that game, that side of the game, having yeah. things in trust, having things in blind Well, in trust. theory, in theory, Ben Armstrong could have had his home his in a, home. In a that's, different that's, name. That's where I'm going. Because you can going. do a DBA or doing business as yeah we what we need to specifically do is do a, a an episode focused on legality trust taxes yes, yes. I think that would be really yes. good especially from because, our perspective you know this is one thing I love what Ben is doing um, courageous for him to to be, to be going this direction and it's it's necessary uh, I just want him to be careful well, he's taking you know. it further you know the Kevin O'Leary thing. Um, now I think he's talking about going after a few other people. And if you go after yeah, enough rich people, I mean, they can just, yeah, just combine just forces. Be, and Exactly. I just want him to be careful, bro. Yeah. Well, he's already talking about potential security. So he, he's um, do it. it's, he, I think he knew what he was getting into. Um, and also on a political front, what he's trying to do with fighting 
uh, legislate like bringing positive legislation to the mm -hmm. to the forefront, whether it's on a state or federal level. Those are things too that I want to talk with you about more privately that we can expose information to people as more information is solid that we can share. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing too with the FTX is, and this is what I haven't been focusing as much on because Ben's been doing a great job. And after having a conversation with Ben, I didn't really see a need to. I want to focus more on this money laundering and corruption with the SEC because I think those are important. But what Ben was saying in that interview was he just wants to see Sam Bankman fried do jail time because obviously he's, he's committed jail. crimes, right? Yeah, so, yeah. and well, he says, he, he's well, do jail. I don't think we have to worry about that. I, I could put up big money to say he will do jail time. The issue is how much jail time. Well, and that's what I'm saying. If he's got to do a lot of time, how much is he going to um, be I don't think he's compliant do with giving time. information? Like with basically saying who helped him because he's trying to reduce his think, sentence. I, I, I have to take the other side of that coin, Rice. I don't think this was some big conspiratorial uh, plot. I don't. I think this was, yes, a guy. The conspiracy part of this, conspiracy fact part of this, is that, yes, he was colluding with the SEC, Gary, Gary Gensler, to basically take over the Carter. He wanted to have the crypto Carter. You know, yeah. he wanted to have it all on locks, everything coming like through Like the him, crypto or, cartel. Right. Like, just or, control or the, it. or the laws and regulations in, in, in a grossly unfair, favorable uh, uh, way for him. That's where the conspiracy theory is or fact to me. Now, this whole take down crypto and not, I don't think that was part of the plan. Because what, 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 let me ask you this. What good is it for him to have blown up his own exchange, his uh, Alameda research? What good is that out of, out of this for him if the whole point was for him to take over power and be the main head honcho in the crypto space? I don't know if it, the whole power thing was because he felt that he was untouchable because of his connections. Um, because it, just looking at things from what I'm understanding from attorneys, the CEO that took over, everything, and even CZ with Binance looking at the, you know, kind of looking at an overall profile of the company and kind of giving a, a clear understanding of what it looks like on paper. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have said that that's a mess. Uh, what we have a former is it the CEO who took Sam Bakeman Freed's spot was involved with the Enron. bankruptcy of Enron and said this looks way worse. Sure. On paper, right. not necessarily yeah. the dollar amount, but just as far as the accounting. The mess. Um, yes. So I'm not sure, man. I'm not saying that it was definitely a big plot to destroy crypto by any means. I don't think that was the, the case. I mm -hmm. think it was a plot to try to leverage what they had to keep going further and then i think what happened was you had a bunch of disgruntled people between projects that have been screwed over that have been trying to blow the whistle for a year and a half several projects that finally are getting attention with channels like bitboy crypto bringing on uh new genesis icp i think he's bringing on secret uh network uh, these projects were kind of sabotaged by ftx and that was kind of getting back to what i was saying was he thinks that there's enough evidence just on companies and projects that were working with FTX or Alameda that were screwed over in legal, legal ways, unlawful ways, that there's enough evidence that they can convict him on that alone. And yeah, then he, he, the so SEC and the, and the money laundering, if there's any le legitimacy and proof that can be provided to that, then that could just add on extra time that he would serve for multiple different charges. So yeah. it, no, I, I, he's doing. But there job was job. some sort of mastermind shit going on, though, dude. Like the you, yes, the whole connection with Caroline Ellison, no, being the daughter of Glenn Ellison, who was he is he is the economic. What is it? Let me see here. I have it written down. Yeah, he, he is the, the department head of the Department of Economics at MIT. He was the former boss of Gary Gensler. Gary Gensler is the head of the SEC. He used to be the former chair of the CFTC. So between the four of them, including Sam Bankman Fried, who apparently had some sort of relationship, sexual relations, in addition to business relations with 
Caroline, I love Harry Potter, Ellison. <laughs> I know that's totally your type. Oh my god, you made me throw up in my mouth. But between the four of those, that there's some there's something going on. I mean, even if oh, you, there was some massive regardless of the Ukraine of Democrat thing, which may not be the easiest thing to prove. Hopefully, there's enough chain analysis and people can because one thing I will say about the crypto community that I'm really proud of is that we've come together in a way where people are now doing all this independent research and bringing it all to the forefront for everybody to be able to share this information, to expose Fuck this information, to get community. this out. Fuck the crypto community. Really? Yeah, really. It's a bunch of nonsense, bro. They're, they're, they're just, they just, they bandwagon hop. You know, there are people, because, you know, there are people that, that we, legitimately care and there are people that legitimately do research and try to expose companies. I'm not man. talking about the general crypto community as a whole. I'm talking about the community that's come to the forefront to really expose things and kind of keep the public image right now. Crypto is not good. Mainstream um, yeah, news my, is trying to push thing a, is, a and very I've so negative spin off on about this. this rice for so long and you have to. Even, you know, back going back to 17, when we started our channels, we saw the uh, compromising that the community was doing. They wanted regulation. They wanted these monsters in our space. Not the whole entire community. There were people like me and you. We were the, we were the mi minority but in the we community. Didn't have, but we didn't have the resources or the outlet or, or, or the, the footprint to make a change i'm talking about the ones that had the resources and the outlet and the footprint to make it known and make some some real change right they were champion for wall street to come in they were champion for regulation they were champion for proper taxation and all of that stuff well so, you know how i've how i've been feeling i mean i told you before that over the past like just seeing crypto over the past few years how it seems to be sucking the tit of the legacy system working you know with banks working uh you have one of the co-founders of ethereum writing white papers for central bank digital currencies Th those were the things that was really kind of making me throw up in my mouth that i was mm -hmm. really feeling sour about but now i will tell you this has kind of changed my perspective a little bit because i feel yeah. here's the one thing you have celsius voyager and and ftx i'm just going to use those three as an example what do they all three have in common celsius voyager ftx digital uh whatever group whatever they're called well they're all is centralized that, just... they're all centralized okay. entities so we're we're not seeing a failure of decentralized entities we're seeing a not failure of centralized entities which and, I, and i'm glad and, you and, and we're seeing the I failure of the that. of the legacy system coming into crypto yeah whether whether it's it was something that crypt it wasn't something that crypto did but it was them coming in with that mentality that fractional reserve banking mentality um paper trading that mentality and really screwed up a lot of things with crypto because they weren't doing things legitimate and then the other good thing is we got coming out of this is the proof of reserves you know now people are pulling off crypto off of exchanges because of channels like ours you know, really encouraging people to not leave their crypto on an exchange. It's not a wallet if you're not actively trading and you can't afford to lose that that money. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of positive things that are coming out of it. Just the main thing that we're going to have to do is when we come back into the next bull market and we have a bunch of new people onboarding back into crypto, we could have this cycle repeat itself if we don't learn from previous mistakes. So we need to still keep this verbiage out and i'm really glad that we're starting to talk about not your keys not your crypto again and it's like almost making trace mayor's proof of uh proof of keys that he was doing on the 3rd of january encouraging everybody to pull your crypto off on the 3rd of january is which is the day the genesis where, where block is, came out he, i'm not sure but we should make proof of keys every day you know I, i'm like, just really i'm you know he was such a big even for me when i jumped in in 2013 bro he was he was very a vocal person, man. And, I, and really, to be honest with you, the first person I ever heard say Bitcoin to a million. Trace Mayor. I don't know where he is. He just disappeared off the face of the earth. Let's see. The last. Interesting. He hasn't posted anything since 2020, since like February of 2020. There you 
you have it. What's going on, my That's dude? interesting. I mean, he could have decided to detox. Who knows? Um, but he was the one that was really pushing for people to get their crypto off of exchanges. That's the day that Bitcoin was first mined, the creation of the Genesis block, January 3rd. And um, so I, I think it's good that we've been bringing that aspect back. There is a large amount of uh, chain analysis showing withdrawal from exchanges and people putting into wallets that I'm going to assume they have possession and control of their private keys. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of good things that I think are coming out, that are coming out of it. And then, you know, there's enough people that are pushing that this isn't about the technology. This is about greedy people who are doing screwed up things. Mm -hmm. And ultimately with the right people. And that's something, again, that Ben Armstrong is doing with the legislation and talking to these different politicians with the right legislation. We can shape things to go in a more positive direction. I'm not a fan of regulation. You're not a fan of regulation. But the thing that we have to come to terms with and realize is there's going to be regulation. Okay, exactly. That's a, that's what I was going to say. So um, if we can have no, people help shape that regulation into a more positive direction that doesn't hinder it, because what, what we were seeing that was going to be happening from Chuck Schumer and Sam Bankman-Fried's initiative was basically if you were in crypto um, and, and you weren't uh, – part of the legacy system, you were pretty much going to be screwed. And it was going to screw mm -hmm. a lot of things peer to peer. And it wouldn't have made me want to live in this country anymore. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to do my best to try to help push through positive legislation for crypto before I try to make that jump of saying, I'm just leaving this country because this country is limiting what I can and can't do with my financial freedom. One so, second, Rice, one second. So we're at just a, a really crazy point, you know, okay. with everything that's going on. So, um, so let me just let me just make this point about what you were saying about regulation. No, you don't want it. I don't want it. But we all have to be. I'm, you know, I, I try to be a hyper realist. Okay. Yes, ideally, optimistically, no regulation. That ain't gonna happen, right? So, be, but but the issue I have is that once in once you introduce regulation, there is no. I've never seen. A scenario and maybe help me out i've never seen a scenario where you introduce regulation in, in a new industry and then it just stops there that's the problem they it just inches forward and forward and forward it's just human human nature to continually regulate and then consequently at some point in the future you end up over regulating so right that's my fear and that's why i don't want regulation but we're going to get it and it's going to be overregulated, uh, as uh, Mrs. As Anessa Santos said on, on my channel. I just if if, her if we were to go the course that we're going, I would say, yeah, I think that more of us that are getting involved in the political game, whether it's uh, political action uh, committees, a PAC, um, mm -hmm. which is something that Ben's done. Um, mm -hmm. I'm using his, him as a now. reference wanted, because one of the things that he that before him, I think. Well, kind of simultaneously, it was a, more of a simultaneous thing. Uh, it was kind of I was getting some ideas off some of the things that he was talking about and then throwing back okay. some feedback because I'd like to get involved. But I, I may get involved in a sideways type situation, like try to create a, a separate pack that could work in conjunction. Okay. Um, but ultimately, I mean, like the more of us that can get involved in D.C. and help shape legislation by educating politicians letting them know the pros and cons seeing the benefit and seeing that they're also not regulating the present but they're regulating the future and talk about their kids and their grandkids and how much these innovations will change the lives of those individuals if you don't see the disruption yourself and i think the more of us that can do that i think like you said and like i said the regulation is going to come but if we can have people really championing cryptocurrency there are other industries that have pushed through via lobbying and stuff like that, positive legislation for their industries. Mm -hmm. So the more that we can try to combat things that are going to hinder the industry, that is going to hinder the nation as a whole, because we know that di the digital economy is here and it's not going anywhere. So America Correct. needs to get on board more than just test piloting a digital dollar CBDC. Yeah. That's so, great. That's um, great. The timeline for this FTX thing is just absolutely crazy how this thing has played out, you know, over the Didn't course. Did it happen on the beaver blood moon the day after? 
So it, some of the events, because so the, the, let me look on my calendar I'm saying here. When shit hit the fan, I could Monday the seventh, was... Monday the seventh, that night when you went to bed, there was that, that blood moon, the beaver blood moon. But it was really technically That's the my morning, moon, guys. Thank you. It, it was the morning of the eighth in the middle okay, of the night. Come so on, the man. That, that, I mean, and that was also election the, the, day, too. Depending on your time zone. I mean, you, but now you this really technically here? this technically started on November 2nd in the I media. I know, but we didn't in the media did because oh, okay. Coindesk and I and as much as I'm not a fan of Coindesk because they're owned by Digital Currency Group and I think F Coindesk F has sponsorship from FTX. They kicked my guy Isaiah Thomas. I, I know, I know. Isaiah, John, uh, not Thomas, Isaiah Bitcoin Thomas. Zay. Isaiah Jackson off. Right. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit, too. Well, we yeah, I was, I've talked on, to him. We're not on we, censor here, guys. Me and him have Maybe talked about scheduling. Video. So okay. uh, we just got to figure out the day. But I thought it was, I was really surprised that Coindesk was the one that published an article raising concerns about the very, financial very, health of very FTX shocking. and Alameda. Very shocking because if if you guys don't know, Digital Currency Group owns Coindesk, who owns, like, they're all in bed together. So it was really a self-inflicted gunshot wound yeah. for them to publish that type of information. And it all, I mean, it shows, too, a little bit more that they're trying to do real media. Because, I mean, that's what uh, uh, media... Maybe it slipped, you don't think it may have just slipped through the cracks? Not something like that, no. No. Not really, okay. not releasing financial uncertainty about Alameda and FTX, and okay. then apparently, you know, talking to Ben Armstrong, you know, he had known a lot of this information, was collecting information, and wanted to drizzle it out. But instead of him being able to drizzle out the information, CZ came in and talked about front, dumping front, his front FTT round. tokens, and mm -hmm. that's what really kind of escalated which, which everything. Which day did that happen? That happened on, it says the 6th. That's when he talked about. So that would be two days before the Bieber blood moon. Okay. And if you haven't watched my video, Bieber dude, blood. you got to watch my video with this guy, Waters Above. And I'll hook you up with him if you're interested. But this is the guy that does the technical analysis with gematria, numerology, and astrology. Okay. It's pretty wild. And he's actually mentioned a lot of things that have happened. Like he talks about the importance of lunar and solar cycles, mm -hmm. phases, and how they impact crypto specifically because what's really interesting is the last the last lunar eclipse that we had mm -hmm. was when terra luna went down That's and then crazy. apparently the there's connection to ftx with apparently being responsible for the downfall of terra luna which you know i'd love to learn more about that as more information is exposed but, you know, you had F so you had CZ talking about dumping. So he said, as part of Binance's exit from FTX equity last year, so they had originally invested in FTX when they first started up. Binance received roughly 2.1 billion USD equivalent in cash in BUSD and FTT. And due to the recent revelations that have come to light, we have decided to liquidate any remaining FTT on our books. There was more tweets from that, but uh, basically. Sam Bankman Free was talking about funds are good. Alameda was talking about we'll buy your FTT. Uh, he wouldn't sell it to them directly. And then all of a sudden, I think it was, was it this day? Was it the 8th? Um, so, yeah, it was the 8th, the day of the blood moon is when um, I woke up and, and it seemed like CZ and Binance was going to acquire FTX. And they had a letter of intention. Yep. which didn't uh, bind them legally to buying it, but gave them an option to look at the books and look at everything to make sure it was something that they wanted to do as a business move. And then after doing that, as a result of corporate due diligence, as well as latest news reports regarding mishandled customer funds and alleged U.S. agency investigations, we had decided that we will not pursue the potential acquisition of FTX.com. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't think that was going to happen. That you thought he was going to really buy it? Yes, yeah. He may have if there wasn't such a hole, uh, because apparently I know, there, I, but there the was thing billions is, of dollars. Or I mean, I don't think it was millions. I think there was like billions of dollars missing from their accounting. Right, which was pro which was probably over in Alameda, you know. So here's the thing: I thought he was still going to do it for the sake of, and they the, conveniently shop in the Bahamas. 
Mm -hmm. To save yeah. crypto? Yeah, I thought he was going to do it to save crypto. I actually thought this was going to go down much further as far as the price the price of Bitcoin in the crypto market cap. I, I thought a non-purchase event was going to give us that capitulation moment. I really did. It did surprise me we didn't hit lower. Mm -hmm. The lowest I think we got was somewhere around the 5.5. 5. 15, yeah. 15.4. Mm -hmm. And I'll say 5.5. 5. 15, 15.5, 15, 15.4. 15, what, was, what was the actual low? Do you remember? 15.4, somewhere around there. So, um, I mean, some of it could be because big traders had their shit locked up on exchanges they can't withdraw from. That's another thing. That is another you know, is, and, you know, then speculation also, of mine. Because you would think it would affect the entire crypto market. And because there's also a bunch of Ethereum that's locked up that people can't get, they can't liquidate their Ethereum either. So a lot of crypto has held its price really well because that's I feel exactly like people are limited on. on how they can and can't trade. Yep, that's exactly what I came if, to the if same there was I, Otherwise, I think that we would have seen a lot lower of a price. Now, yep. I still I think that's so coming. So now my question to you, Rice, is uh, when those funds, not with FTX, because that's going to take years and, and years, but maybe some of the other funds, are there any other funds? We have Mt. Gox uh, uh, funds that still have not been distributed. Right. Will that cause, that is another headwind that we have to play out. So that's why I think we ultimately do end up going lower. The timing of that could be next year, uh, first quarter, in the first. Who knows? I'm not trying to give you a, a prediction here. You can't really time like, the market. I, We're yeah, really in time uncertain it. I just times. try to paint because you're not factoring macro. in. Well, I'm saying you're not factoring in global macro economics as well. You're not looking at, at things specifically from crypto perspective. Exactly. So there are headwinds from a global macro economic standpoint that we still haven't seen play out either so it's a lot man we still don't know what's going to happen with uh the genesis lending the uh, institutional lending company we don't know how that's going to ultimately affect digital currency group which has mm -hmm. their hands in a lot of things in the cryptocurrency space um we don't know again all the companies that have had exposure and how much that's going to affect people because i'm sure there's going to be some people trying to scramble around and not have information get out publicly that will make its way. That's why I really am just encouraging people to just be smart with with the crypto that they have. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that uh, was is really alarming about the FT FTX Alameda thing is you mentioned the Frieds, the Frieds, the Frieds, that Dan Friedberg guy uh, who was Dan general counsel Friedberg. for FTX. Who, uh, Can't make people this shit up, bro. And if you look, I mean... It, it looks like, you know, he, he was brought in or, you know, he was a, definitely a part of this. That's why I say, like, it doesn't seem like there was a, a plan to ruin crypto, but it definitely seemed like these guys were conspiring behind the scenes to do some shady ass shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, using customer funds, transferring funds back and forth between companies, um, offshore entities, um, I think you've heard about the multi-million dollar home in Bahamas. Mm -hmm. His parents, their political connections, their compliant attorneys. I mean, this shit goes really deep, and that's why I would really like to see. I mean, me and you have talked. Insider trading is 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 technically illegal, right? Yes. Well, but yet not in. I'm not sure. Not if, if it, not is. if it's your family member doing it, right? <laughs> That and I don't is it illegal in crypto yet? Like what? It's so much. Well, what I mentioned, what I'm, gone. what the reason I'm bringing this up is because we've seen Federal Reserve chairs and we've seen various politicians, including family members, whether yes. there was legislation passed for those politicians, but there wasn't legislation passed for these federal chairs that were doing insider trading that were were given the option to just step down and not have any legal repercussion. Um, so I, I bring up the insider trading thing because I, I tweeted out, let's see how our legal system actually works with all this stuff that's going on mm -hmm. because we've seen things happen that are illegal that have gone, that have been swept under the rug is the same thing going to happen with the situation.
if enough people are able to expose this information and get it out there, are they going to be able to shut everybody up? Are they going to have to do something? So that's what's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Um, and I'm really paying attention to Maxine Waters and seeing what she's going to be doing with her investigation, being that she received something like $300,000 or something like that in donations Bro, from I Sam Bankman Freed. I mean, it's, it's crazy that we have people that are attached to these individuals being the ones to do the investigating on these individuals. How does that happen, bro? It's like, like you how, investigating how me. <laughs> how legally does that not? I'm sorry. How is that? A, is, how, what is that? That's one of that's my trading alert. Oh, okay. So how does that? How does she not recuse herself or whatever you whatever the term is from a case or or a, an investigation? Like you know why, and you know better than me. You can explain this because in Congress. And in, in, in the House and all of that, they don't have, they don't abide by the same judicial laws, am I correct? That a normal court would. I, I don't know, somewhere. I don't know 100%, yeah. but that would be, okay. that would that's mean that I they heard. would, if, if that's correct, they would be under what we would call Article Three courts, which would be more of a common law court, which a common law court, if you don't have a victim, there's no crime. If you don't harm anyone, there's no crime. So... I've questioned why some politicians haven't been convicted for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Senator Warren, I think she's coming out talking. She's retweeted some stuff about FTX. She's come out talking about FTX, but yet her daughter was uh, or is is an intern for the SEC, from what mm -hmm. I'm understanding. So I mean, she's she's talking about the FTX collapse. This is from a day ago. FTX collapse should be a wake up call at SEC government, at Justice Department, at US Treasury, should use their expansive authority to crack down hard on crack crypto fraud. See, Congress this is must where, close this, loopholes and back just, up these financial cops let, let on the me, beat with more resources. Let me just interject on that because this is exactly what Anessa was saying in my interview that will be public, might be tomorrow or probably Friday. I went public for my YouTube members. Uh, today, day before Thanksgiving, but this is the com this is the conflicting um, story that we're getting. She's in this space, blockchain lawyer, been doing it for many years now. She knows and studies the laws and regulations around crypto. She says this is so not the case. There is so much regulatory guideline. Guys, there are so many regulatory guidelines for cryptos as it stands today, Rice. And she's like, it does. We don't need more. It's already overregulated. But then, why is everybody saying that we don't have any clarification on regulation if it's overregulated um, already? I don't know. They don't really. They're not lawyers. We hear this happening. We hear this from. Because I'd love who to get lawyers. her take on what the clarification is. If there's already, if we're I mean, already overregulated. Listen, there are people literally right now in jail for trading Bitcoin. And this is not, I'm not talking about Ross. I'm talking about as of the last two years, people in jail, a Florida guy, I think, or a Georgia, a Georgia, a Georgia citizen is in jail right now for this. Well, there were a lot of people who got put in jail for, uh, I knew an individual, a couple of individuals that were, Selling Bitcoin on localbitcoins.com, selling to undercover government agents. Uh, some information was exchanged that also helped to solidify cases like this money came from drug distribution. And this is how I'm going to buy these Bitcoin from you. And they don't have money transmittal license. Yeah. And they get convicted of not having a money transmittal license and money laundering and other things mm -hmm. like that, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. And I've tried to support anybody that I could because that's just a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. That's what Bitcoin and cryptocurrency was technically created for. And that's technically what I would love to see us get back to. Now, and as so a trader, I know say... that you don't like this, but I would love to see no exchanges existing and us just utilizing the cryptocurrency. It can go up and down in value, but we don't have to swing trade it necessarily. But if it's what no, people that, use, no, that's a really a real an unrealistic. I wouldn't mind spending my Litecoin, my Dogecoin. Totally well, wouldn't in, mind that. In free in free markets, you're gonna have arbitrage. 
regardless. Right. I know I know they're going to exist, but I'm just saying it seems like that that seems to be the main purpose for cryptocurrency's existence is so people can trade it and make more money. Mm -hmm. But if it became our form of currency that we were using for everyday transactions and a way to exchange value, mm -hmm. uh, then we wouldn't it would go back to the original vision of what Satoshi wanted, which was peer to peer. And it doesn't have to be Bitcoin specifically. It could be like what we talked about Dogecoin being an inflationary cryptocurrency where there's an infinite supply. Mm -hmm. But um, what is your overall thoughts? I guess wrapping up today's video at this, uh, what are your overall thoughts with the market overall with FTX? the aftermath the contagion and mm -hmm. and what's to come yeah from I a think, uh, from a crypto domus perspective that's what we need is a little crypto domus <laughs> i think rice that uh we still have a, a few more weeks maybe months left to figure out what's going on if you recall and i hear people always talking about and making this same analogy or comparison to bear Stearns, right and Lehman Brothers. There was, Lehman Brothers. There was, about a, there was about a six month gap between Bear Stearns going down and Lehman Brothers. And so many people are comparing what we're going through right now in the space to something akin to that event that happened in 08. And it's possible, you know, history doesn't rhyme or repeat, but it does rhyme. Um, and maybe it's not six months because you know, in that TradFi industry, there's a lot of regulatory things going on. There's a lot more centralized control. So they could have covered it up and kicked the can another six months. So I don't think it's going to take that long because we're in a different market. This is a different industry. Faster moving. Faster moving. There are no bailouts. There are no people plunge protection teams or anything like that. So probably another six weeks. Uh, before we find out where all the dead bodies are buried. And at that point, we can start to build a base. Um, when start I say to reevaluate. Yeah, th th that doesn't mean we don't go lower, but maybe we start to trend in a, in a range. Maybe it's a 15 20%, 30% range for cryptos for a while, a year or so. It happened in 2015 to 16, into 16 and going into 17. It was just a dead market. It wasn't really too much going on um, from a price perspective. Now, this go around is different. There are a lot of people building great uh, projects and companies. So the development is going to continue. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, the, the next six weeks, I think, are going to be telling. Well, you mentioned the Lehman Brothers thing, and we, me and you had talked last week privately, and I had watched a video from George Gammon was mentioning something about the comparing it to a Lehman Brothers moment. I don't know if you've seen that video yet. No. Um, I'm not, I don't follow Gammon. He, he puts out some pretty interesting videos. I like his whiteboard videos, and that's one of these whiteboard videos. And, okay. And that's where he talks about the six, roughly it took about six months for the bleed-out effect from the Lehman Brothers situation to really hit the, the market as far as a bottom. Um, I agree. I don't think it'll take six months with crypto. Um, mm -hmm. with, with it being a faster moving space, probably two to three months, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just kind of treading carefully um, and really paying attention to what's going on, um, looking at more of the companies that have had the exposure and seeing, really trying to pay attention also to the digital currency group thing. Because if there is some fallout with digital currency group in any capacity, which could be really ultimately good for crypto in the end, that would definitely bring down some more downward action. Uh, mm -hmm. in my opinion so, uh, so you agree to, though that there that we have not hit the bottom yet no we haven't and i talked to a guy an in, industry insider he's been on the otc side trading bitcoin for in, in big blocks talking yards meaning billions and and more um on the institutional side and he's saying that digital uh what is it called digital currency group dcg currency group uh, is, is out in the market is now raising funds, uh, raising capital. They're looking to raise two billion. So, yeah, I don't know if it's just for specifically for Genesis, <clears throat> because I don't know. I don't see I don't see Digital Currency Group personally. I don't see them sacrificing the body for an arm. 
No, 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 no. But it, yeah, exactly. It's for one of their arms. They're they're trying. They're looking to raise two billion. Right. Billion now in the private equity. Private. And I think now. I think pretty much that has been already kind of priced in with the markets at this point. The the Genesis lending situation. It's it's Probably. I think it's, it's it's trying to determine what other companies have exposure and how much more effect the bleed out is going to be. Um, but even with what you said. You know, we're releasing this video on. I'm going to put it on my Patreon. If you want to upload it to your members today, that's cool. But we're going to release okay. it on the 24th. Do you see within the next month or so, next or till the end of the year, we normally see what we call Santa Claus rallies? Yes. Do you foresee something like that taking place in crypto and make? And do you see it being? If you do, do you see it being significant? Uh, hmm. That's a good one. That's tough. Now that's tough. I don't know. We have to revisit that. I mean, that we're, we're we're getting a rally now. You know, we're we're pushing up now. Um, what are we at? Like sixteen? Yeah, sixteen five, roughly. So you know, it's possible, man. It's possible. Um, but that's a very short time period. I mean, we're talking about just just shy, just over a month. Shout out to Litecoin, man. It's up thirty six. Shout out to Light. Thirty six percent. Another thing too, uh, since since we're talking about Ben Armstrong so much this episode, I don't I, I don't know if I told you this or uh, if you've seen it. This was yesterday. He was interviewing a blockchain backer, and uh, as a guy in the XRP community, uh, as a YouTuber. And he, uh, he's got a really interesting look at cycles and market action. But one thing he was talking about was coins that have not hit their all-time low. I, I talked about that the other day. And that being, I guess, Chainlink is another and Polygon is a third. Those three have not hit all-time lows. And, um, and then Ben was like, some light bulb went off in Ben's head that I wasn't able to quite capture what it was and i want to try to talk with them more privately after thanksgiving about it but with some of the legislation that they're trying to push through on a federal level he said that would benefit coins like litecoin mm -hmm. so i think people are going to, as and i had a conversation with miss teen crypto on her channel yesterday about this as well so if people mm -hmm. want to check that out because i think she should be like director of marketing for litecoin at this point i, I say it's, i Vegas. say it, that's a whole nother story. I'll, I'll tell you about that. Um, she was supposed to be there, ultimately. But um, I say a lot of people in crypto have discounted Litecoin because it's boring. You know, it doesn't have like a lot of the DeFi aspects. A lot of these projects have the NFT. The dollar, are quite... the dollar is boring. The euro is well, boring. Well, that's, that's the, the argument the that I use is, is that when you talk about money, when you generally, if you go up to like one of your friends and start talking about the difference between money and currency and you start talking to them about sound, what is sound money? Uh, it's not an exciting conversation. Like not yeah, many people are going to be like, yeah, I, I, I want to hear about this. Exactly. Uh, most people are going to be like, shut the, shut up, man. Like, no, let's exactly. talk about something that we, that we want to talk about. I don't want to talk about money. So right. yeah, money inherently currency is boring. And mm -hmm. if something works well and does what it's supposed to do, why are people punishing it? It's like Litecoin is being punished for doing what it's supposed to do and doing it well. Yep. Being uh, a faster version of Bitcoin, and it was able to learn from all the mistakes that the original coders, Satoshi Nakamoto and everybody else included, with the inflation bugs and all the other things that have happened on the Bitcoin blockchain before the creation of Litecoin. So we said it before, it's the oldest chain that's had zero problems. And if there's another chain that's been out before Litecoin that's had zero problems, please let me know. Because I don't think that there is one and we might yeah. see a resurgence of some of these we'll, older projects so this, is, this is what i said this is what i said in yesterday's video exactly spot on i said we're going in the next altcoin cycle people are going to have a, an appreciation for the old school boring crypto current the literally the cryptocurrencies the ones that survived the dashes the litecoins the bitcoins the you, you get what i'm saying those what about neo up. and eos no no those are programmable <laughs> tokens those are yeah no i get it no, yeah digibyte so digibyte those, digibyte might be one of those that dash that, digibyte yeah those are going to you i, I personally now this is a crypto diamonds 
prediction right here. I think those coins are going to see a lot of love. Sweet. So, hey. Yeah, we're going to have to do this again, like revisit the market talk before uh, we come to the Christmas season. And also yeah. something else that I want to put out to people that we'll talk briefly on. Um, we're going to be recording another show, an uncensored conversation that I go on both of our Rumble channels and Od I put it on my Odyssey as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I encourage people to check that out. But me and Blood have been talking for quite some time about doing uh, a show together, starting a, maybe a separate it. channel. So just stay tuned. Uh, we are trying to come up with some names for the show. Um, oh, basically, we already got a name. I don't know oh, are we going to call it that? Oh, we are the Jerice. Uh, the Jerucker. The, the Jerucker Christ Christ, Christ show. The Jerucker Christ show. Yeah, that sounds uh, like that sounds like some old old black church or something like a pastor at some old Baptist church. That, hey man, we are in the hood. The good word. <laughs> we are preaching the good word of cryptocurrency. Absolutely. So on the screen, I've got, um, well, I thought I did. Let me go ahead and correct myself here. I'm trying to multitask. I thought I was doing a screen share, and I totally was not. So here we go. I'm going to have links down below for all of this. If you're watching on CBTV, make sure you're checking out Rice TVX. I'll share those links here in a minute. And then if you're watching on Rice TVX, make sure you're checking out all things CBTV, Crypto Blood. Make sure you're checking out Crypto Blood IO. If you want to get 25% off on Bloodalytics, you can use Rice TVX 25 at checkout as a promo code. Rice TVX 25 to get 25% off Bloodalytics. Mm -hmm. I also have links uh, down below for cbtv crypto blood on youtube make sure you subscribe to his rumble channel following over on the twitters make sure you're signed up on uh, rice tvx.com on my mailing list make sure you're subscribed to my crypto and economic channel on youtube rice tvx make sure you subscribe to rice against the grain my new channel and also make sure you're following me on the rumbles as well you got any final thoughts or anything you want to add before we wrap up this video my friend no, man, that, that's it, man. I just encourage people to be hyper realist. That's, that's kind of been my theme uh, in my in my head the last few weeks, just being hyper realist, not too overly optimistic, not being pessimistic. Look at the facts, analyze them objectively and make your decisions based on that. And uh, I think our channels are good sources for connecting the dots. And I well said. Very, yeah, I think you're very realistic. And I, I think I am as well. So, that's yeah, it, we man. definitely don't try to blow smoke up people's asses and don't Not tell people what we think they want to hear. We tell Maybe people that's what why they, our they need to hear. Haven't grown the way they should. I don't you know. want to try an experiment and just start a channel start where you just tell it to say? So, I, I would say act like somebody in particular, but I won't mention his name. Um, <laughs> So we we'll just we'll to. just leave it at that. We'll just leave it at yeah. that. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to both thank of our you, channels. Thank you. Uh, I will leave you with this as I like to leave everybody again. I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. I encourage you to be a blessing to others. Treat people how you want to be treated. Be the glitch you want to see in this matrix. Be the change you want to see in the world. Practice change. And until next time, holla. Holla. <laughs>